Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain you the three types of verbs. So verbs has a lot of uh, types, but in this section, we're going just to look at the types of verbs based on the number of the objects that it can contain. The first one we have is the transitive verbs. Then we have the ditransitive verbs and then we have the intransitive verbs. In this video, we are going to see why do we call them these names, and then we are going to have a look at the types of the objects. So the first type is called the transitive verbs. These verbs take only one object. So actually, we have a huge number of verbs that take only one object in the normal case. Like the verbs, we have leave, we say, he leaves the room. So in this sentence, we can consider the he, the pronoun, as a subject. Leaves is the verb, and the room is the object. And if we think deeply about this verb, we can't come up with a sentence uh, with the verb leave that may, has, uh, the, that may have more than one object. So we can say, for example, he leaves the room early, but early is not an object, early is an adverb. Or he leaves the room at night. At night is not uh, an object, but it is a preposition phrase, and so on. Uh, the other example that we have for the transitive verbs, we have take. Like when we say he takes a note. So for the note is an object, and it is only one object. So uh, the verb take will be considered as a transitive verb. Then we have eat, as in the example, he eats the meal. So the meal is the only object that we have here in the sentence. So the verb eat is a transitive one. And the verb drink, when, like when we say he drinks water. So uh, the verb drinks uh, gets only or takes only one object so that we call the verb drink as a transitive verb. Now, by the end, uh, we can say that the transitive verbs take only one object. Now, the second type of the verbs in this section is the ditransitive verb. And from the uh, suffix di, okay, which, which comes at the beginning of the uh, word, di means to. So, once we say ditransitive verb, uh, it means that this verb takes two objects. So, uh, this is in the normal case. Once we are counting the noun phrases that come after the verb, so we can count them as two objects. We will get some examples. Like when we say send, as in the sentence, he sends me an email. So, me is object number one, and an email is object number two. Now, by the end of this video, I'm going to tell you about the names for these objects. Okay, uh, the, the verb buy, as when we have he buys me a toy. So, me is considered as object number one, and a toy is considered as object number two. And give, the verb give is a ditransitive one, since it takes two objects as well as he gives me a book. So me is object number one and a book is object number two. And it's similar to pass, write, read, and so on. And actually, if you search deeply about the ditransitive verbs, you will find a lot of them. Now, uh, before going through the rest of the types, I'll tell you something regarding the transitive and the ditransitive verbs. That is, uh, sometimes, the um, transitive uh, verbs that takes one, um, one uh, object can work as a ditransitive verb. Or, sorry, the ditransitive verb can, can work as a transitive uh, verb. Like, for example, if we say send, send, this verb is normally a ditransitive verb. It means that it takes two objects. So simply I can say, he sends me, he sends me a book. 
Okay, so simply the normal case for the word or for the verb send is that it is a ditransitive verb since it takes object number one and object number two. Okay, but sometimes we can use this verb, I mean the ditransitive verb, in a shape of transitive verb, like when we say he sends or uh, let's say the same sentence, a book to me. So as you notice here, we have, this is the verb, this is an object, and this is the only object that we have in the sentence. And the other object that we have here in the first sentence um, becomes like a preposition phrase. So this one will be said as um, a preposition phrase. It is not an, uh, an object. But later on, I'll give you the names for these preposition phrases. Okay, uh, I'll give you another example. Okay, like when we say, for example, uh, the word or the verb write, write, similar to write is a, a ditransitive verb. So in the normal case, we can say um, he writes me a letter okay so this is object number one and object number two and the normal case for the uh, verb write is to be a ditransitive verb but we can use it as a transitive one like when we say he writes a letter okay to me so as you notice here that is, uh, one of these objects becomes here at the beginning, I mean closer to the verb, uh, immediately after the verb, and the other object becomes as a preposition phrase. This has a sense, actually, or this has a consideration. Uh, I will tell you about it later on. Okay, let's continue now with the uh, other types of the verbs. The third type is called the intransitive verb. And as you know that the uh, suffix in, okay, means the opposite of something. So when once we say transitive, it means that the verb takes an object. So intransitive means that this verb takes no object. It uh, will be ended, I mean the sentence, by the verb or an adverb or a, uh, an adjective, for example, it depends on the meaning of the sentence. So for example, we have uh, these verbs, these examples, we have agree. So simply I can say, I agree with the idea. So if you go to the structure of this uh, sentence, so simply we can say that I is the subject, agree is the verb, and with the idea is the preposition phrase. So by the end, we have no object here. Similar to appear, um, takes no object, like when we say, he appears suddenly. So by the end of this uh, sentence, we have, uh, I mean, after the verb, we have an adverb. We have no noun, or in other words, we have no objects. So he is a subject, appears as a verb, and suddenly is an adverb. Listen is the same as um, it takes no object, and work, it, it takes no object. Actually, the intransitive verbs are um, a lot in English language. So we have, for example, lie, die, um, and many other examples. Okay, uh, let's move now to the to something else, which is the uh, the types of objects. Uh, actually, this is so important to be handled uh, once we take the uh, types of verbs. So simply, we can say that objects can be either direct object or indirect objects. So we are going to look at the, um, the transitive verbs and the ditransitive verbs since these are the two types of verbs that take only objects. But the intransitive verbs, since they take no uh, objects, so we are not going to look at them. So uh, for the transitive verbs, Uh, as you know, transitive verbs take only um, one object. This object will be a direct. So simply we can say we have the verb and the object that comes 
closer or let's say directly after this verb will be considered as a direct one, direct object. Okay, so uh, this is just like a theoretical um, uh, discussion. Now, uh, the ditransitive verbs, here we have, um, we can uh, look at some other uh, details. So the ditransitive verbs, okay, so simply uh, we will get a verb plus object one and object two. Okay, I'll tell you something, that is the closer one I mean, uh, the object that comes directly after the verb will be said to be the um, uh, indirect, indirect object. And the second object that is far away from the verb will be said as a direct object. So this is the first case for the transitive verb. So for the transitive verb, simply we can say Once we have the normal case for the, um, for the uh, uh, ditransitive verbs, so simply we can say object one and object two. The object one is called the indirect object and object two will be said in the direct object. Now suppose that we are going to use this verb, I mean the ditransitive verb, um, with the sense of a transitive verb. Like when I told you about the uh, the verbs like uh, give, for example, when we say, for instance, he gives me a book. So this is the normal case for the uh, usage of this ditransitive verb that it comes. We have ditransitive verb give. This is object number one, which is the indirect object. And a book is the direct object object okay i told you before that the same sentence i mean the same uh, verb will be um, uh, will be used in in the uh, meaning of transitive verb so we will say he gives a book to me like this one so simply we will get uh, uh, one object and a preposition phrase now, in syntax, we can call the uh, this object as a direct, since here we have only um, one object. But by the end, we have one object. So, since we have only one object, this will be called a direct object. Now, what about the this preposition phrase? This preposition phrase will be considered as a preposition phrase, but we can say between brackets, indirect object I mean in the meaning okay so for the ditransitive verb we can make a summary that is for the ditransitive verbs if we use the ditransitive verbs in the normal case so the first uh, uh, noun phrase comes after this verb will be called indirect object and the second NP will be considered as a direct one but once we are using this verb, I mean the ditransitive one, in the sense of transitive verb, so simply we can say the first noun phrase that comes immediately after the verb will be considered as a direct object, and the preposition phrase that follow them will, will be considered as indirect object. Actually, for the object, it has um, um, many other details, okay? Uh, we will consider them in uh, the following uh, videos. Thank you for your listening.